abolished by the international First time that levels of global poverty will go up. The scope of this pandemic is unprecedented. More and more communities are welcoming refugees and women are at the forefront of positive social change. We cannot ignore racism any longer. But the worst effects of climate change can still be avoided. It's more droughts, more floods, more forest fires. So, it all just feels so hopeless. Really? It's not all bad. There are people doing good things in the world. I know, but look at all the injustice and suffering. Do you really think our actions make a difference? Sorry I'm late. Welcome. Thank you. Hey, nice flowers. I know, some kids were giving out flowers to everyone. Cool. We were just discussing the state of the world and how it can feel as though our actions are too small to impact the bigger picture. But every act of service we engage in, however small, contributes to the transformation of ourselves and the world around us. Let's keep watching. Although the world has been experiencing much turmoil and turbulence, there is a growing consciousness of humanity's interdependence and interconnectedness as one human family. In over a hundred thousand localities around the world, individuals and communities are drawing inspiration from Baha'u'llah's vision of the oneness of humanity. A vision that requires a transformation in the very structures and relationships of society. As millions of people strive to translate Baha'u'llah's teachings of unity and justice into action, a profound advance in culture is beginning to occur. Individuals see themselves as protagonists of social change and seek to contribute to the betterment of their neighborhoods and villages. Communities, characterized by a dynamic pattern of worship and service, are promoting the spiritual and material well-being of all. Children are being raised to develop their inherent spiritual qualities and to appreciate the diversity and unity of the peoples of the world. Young people are being empowered to navigate a crucial stage of their lives and to channel their energies towards building a just future. Families are experiencing greater unity and groups of families are coming together to strengthen local community life. Relationships between individuals, communities and institutions are being defined by cooperation and reciprocity. All these efforts aim at bringing humanity closer to the peaceful and prosperous global civilization envisioned by Baha'u'llah. Well, this certainly gives me hope. Me too. I know, just think about it. Your devotional, your children's class, in your junior youth group, they are all contributing to change. Yes, but there is still a long path ahead of us. And change does take time. Exactly. If we look at the Baha'i community 100 years ago, just after the passing of Abdul Baha, it looked very different. When we reflect on how far we've come, we can see that the achievements of today are a result of the sacrifice and courage of those who came before us. It's true, the seeds that were planted then are giving fruit. That's right. Understanding history gives us the perspective we need in order to move forward. Let's continue. never seen a funeral like this before. 10,000 mourners from Jewish, Christian and Muslim faiths, women, men and children, rich and poor, had come together to pay tribute to Abdul Baha, he who had been a loving father to them all. Abdul Baha, the successor of Baha'u'llah, had devoted his life to promoting the oneness of humanity. The pivot of that oneness is the covenant of Baha'u'llah, 
a covenant that embodies both the spirit and the method of attaining positive change in the structure of present-day society. Abdul Baha, appointed as the center of the covenant by Baha'u'llah, ensured the unity of the community and preserved the integrity of his teachings. His last and greatest gift was his will and testament. In it, he inaugurated the administrative order and appointed Shoghi Effendi, his beloved grandson, as guardian of the Baha'i faith, thus ensuring the continuity of the power of the covenant with the center to whom the Baha'is would turn. Abdul Baha had not left his loved ones alone. Parfois, je me sens tellement seul. Je sais qu'Abdul Baha est avec moi, mais aujourd'hui, mes amis se sont encore moqués du nouveau garçon de notre classe. Cette fois-ci, au lieu de ne rien faire, je leur ai dit d'arrêter, mais alors ils ont commencé à se moquer de moi. Tu as été très courageux. C'est pas toujours facile de faire ce qui est juste. Je me sens si seule quand je le fais. Beaucoup de gens qui ont amélioré le monde se sont parfois sentis seuls. Shouri Effendi n'avait que 24 ans quand son grand-père Abdul Baha est mort. Ça lui a brisé le cœur. Le poids du monde reposait maintenant sur ses épaules. Peux-tu imaginer à quel point il s'est senti seul et submergé. He was now guardian of the faith. He had the responsibility of translating into reality Baha'u'llah's vision of a spiritually and materially prosperous civilization. He also faced opposition from those who did not accept his new role. His great aunt Bahia Khanum the daughter of Baha'u'llah, was a source of much consolation and strength. With her support, and knowing that Abdul Baha was always with him, Shoghi Effendi devoted himself to his role as guardian. In 1921, the Baha'i community mainly consisted of groups of individuals and communities, some small, some large, scattered across the world with no clear system of organization. Some were being persecuted for their beliefs, and many were struggling materially. How could this global civilization be built with so few people and such meager means. Of course, the building of such a civilization requires the conscious participation of everyone. Every nation and every group, indeed every individual, should be able to contribute to some degree to the emergence of this world civilization. At that time, so few people had heard of Baha'u'llah's message. How could it be shared with all the peoples of the world? In 
In the Tablets of the Divine Plan, addressed to the Baha'is of North America, the executors of this global vision, Abdul Baha had provided the charter for the growth and establishment of the faith. Within these tablets are held the seeds of the world's spiritual revival and the emergence of that civilization. But how would this future civilization function? How would decisions be made? How would every voice be heard? A system of organization would be required, one that could serve the needs and well-being of all. Baha'u'llah himself had envisioned such a system. Abdul Baha had laid out the blueprint for the Baha'i administrative order in his will and testament. Now the time had come for Shoghi Effendi to start building it. From the passing of Abdul Baha and through the midst of the great economic depression of the 1930s, the Baha'is, though small in number, responded with love and faith to Shoghi Effendi's directives. They continued sharing the teachings of Baha'u'llah with others and began forming local spiritual assemblies. While forming these new institutions, could they have imagined how today people in many places are turning to local spiritual assemblies for guidance and illumination? These assemblies are developing the capacity to prevent and relieve suffering in the societies of which they're an integral part. Today, in some settings, local governments and other institutions are working in collaboration with these assemblies to advance their communities. Whenever a sufficient number of local assemblies have been formed, they pave the way for the election of new national spiritual assemblies. Under the guidance of Shoghi Effendi, the administrative order, integral to the growth of the faith and its society-building powers, was beginning to take shape. Now that the pillars of the administration were being established, it was possible to begin the systematic unfoldment of the Divine Plan. The first stage of the Divine Plan was the Seven-Year Plan in 1937. One by one, as national communities were established and matured, they each adopted their own plan. At the start of World War II, as nations began launching armies of invasion, the Baha'is arose to marshal an army of love. Over the next decades, individuals and families, at first largely from communities across North America and Iran, responded to the Guardian's plans with courage and determination. As well as traveling to cities and towns across their homelands, the friends in North America traveled to countries in Central and South America. While the Baha'is in the cradle of the faith traveled to countries in the East and far beyond. Despite facing many challenges and hardships, they left their homes to share the message of unity and peace with people in all parts of the world. Those who embraced the faith of Baha'u'llah were individuals from all strata of society, including Queen Marie of Romania, the first monarch to embrace the faith. Shoghi Effendi wrote thousands upon thousands of letters guiding, inspiring, and encouraging individuals, groups, and Baha'i institutions. He offered profound insights, building an awe-inspiring vision of the future. He translated the Baha'i writings into English, expounded the sacred texts, 
and developed the faith's spiritual and administrative center in the Holy Land. His tremendous legacy will guide humanity for centuries to come. Même si Shor Effendi était guidé et protégé, ça ne veut pas dire qu'il n'a pas souffert. Il a connu des moments de chagrin et de désespoir profond. Qu'est-ce qu'il faisait dans ces moments-là Il priait et ensuite il agissait sachant qu'Abdul Baral l'aidait. Je vais prier aussi et demain, je vais devenir ami avec le nouveau garçon de notre classe. Germany invades Poland and the free state of Danzig. Six, the first atomic bomb hit Hiroshima. Peace and a final end to history. The 51 United Nations have organized to get the civilized... This universal declaration of human rights... South Korea becomes a battleground. What did you see? Yes. And especially the school. احنا ندرس تاريخ الاربعينات والخمسينات بس انا فارح جدا اني ما كنت عايش في هذاك الفتره هذه الايام كانت من الايام المظلمه في التاريخ ولكن كان فيها ايضا بوارق من النور بوارق من النور ايش قصدك كان هذه الفتره هي التي دعا فيها حضره شوقي افندي البهائيين لأخذ رسالة حضرة بهاء الله إلى جميع أنحاء العالم جدك وجدتك كانوا من الذين لبوا هذه الدعوة صدق؟ هذا ممتاز نعم ولكن لم يكن الأمر سهل مثل ما تتصور تركوا بيتهم أشغالهم راحتهم تركوا كل شيء وراءهم حتى عندما ودعوا أهلهم كانوا على علم أنها قد تكون المرة الأخيرة الذي يشوفوهم فيها بالإضافة إلى أن السفر كان صعب جدا في ذلك الوقت. بس كيف قدروا يفعلوها؟ نعم، لقد فعلوا ذلك بدافع الحب النابع من قلوبهم لحضرة بها الله وللبشرية. بالإضافة إلى أنهم كانوا على علم بأن رسالة حضرة بها الله لا تقتصر على البهائيين فقط، وإنما هي للعالم أجمع. واو. خليني أوري لك شيء प्रभु ने फिर प्यासी धरती पर फिर प्यासी धरती पर गंगा नई बहाई है युग युग के सब भेद मिटाने आया धर्म बहाई है युग युग के सब भेद मिटाने आया धर्म By 1953, the capacity of the Baha'i community had so increased that Shoghi Effendi could now call for the first global collective plan. A 10-year world-embracing spiritual enterprise further unfolding Abdul Baha's divine plan. The Baha'is responded immediately. Young and old, rich and poor, frail and healthy, single or with families, leaving everything behind, they traveled to places often unknown to them, 
to share Baha'u'llah's teachings with all. record every sacrifice, every heroic act that these souls offered. Many of those they met were longing for such teachings, and soon, together, they began to work for the betterment of the world. أها إذا العيش في هذاك الزمان ما كان سيء لهذا الدرجة طيب فجي بعد الظهر اليوم أممم أنا مش كويس في هذه الأشياء يعني أتكلم مع الناس اللي ما أعرفهمش هم مش غرباء هم ناس من حارتنا أيوة بس الكل مشغولين جدا ما أعتقدش إنهم بيهتموا بهذا النوع من الحوارات وكمان على الإضافة مش ليش أفرض نفسي على أحد أصلا موضوع مش محاولة إقناع الآخرين بأي شيء الهدف هو خلف فضاء فيه نسمع بعض من البعض شوف كيف نقدر نعمل مع بعض عشان نطور حالتنا شفت ان الناس يعني بالفعل يشتوا يشاركوا في الحوارات الهادفة بس هل تعتقدي ان الحوار يقدر يغير اي شيء؟ فكر في خطة العشر سنوات آلاف الحوارات من هذا النوع حدثت في هذه الفترة مما أدى إلى تغييرات عظيمة عادني شفت هذا الفيديو الرائع كيف إنه الحوارات الهادفة تقدر تغير حياة الشخص I was born in Germany in 1921 At the end of World War II I became a prisoner of war in Italy in prison, our discussions often revolved around the meaning of life and religion. My heart and mind began to open to new ideas. Soon after returning to Germany, I met my husband-to-be. He had served with an armored division in Northern Africa. We became friends with a group of Baha'is learning about Baha'u'llah's teachings of the oneness of religion and the unity of mankind, a message that was simply astounding to us. It didn't take long until we became Baha'is. In 1957, we went on pilgrimage and met the beloved guardian. When he learned that my husband had fought in Africa, he encouraged him to return, this time with a message of love. On the 5th of July, 1959, with our six children, we arrived in Southwest Africa during the time of strict apartheid. It was forbidden for people of different races to be friends because we weren't allowed together openly. We held meetings in our homes to study Baha'u'llah's writings. Despite such hardship, we were grateful just to be together. A few years later, the first local spiritual assembly was elected. This was the beginning of the Baha'i administration in Namibia. Aha, then خلاص بنضمكم بعد الظهر اليوم. طيب. بس تعرفي قصة هذيك الأيام ما كانت كلها قصة انتصارات مع كل انتصار كان هناك أزمات لازم يتغلبوا عليها أي نوع من الأزمات؟ على سبيل المثال كان هناك وبال أنفلونزا في عام 1957 
وكان حضرت شوقي أفندي في لندن ومرض وتوفي فجأة وبشكل غير متوقع وكانت هذه صدمة رهيبة للعالم البهائي بكله وحدث كل هذا في منتصف خطة السنوات العشر بس مع أنه حضرة شوق أفندي قد توفي إلا أن العملية اللي بدأها بقيت مستمرة خليني أوري لي الشيء There was an overwhelming sense of grief and desolation upon the passing of the Guardian. It was also a time of uncertainty for the Baha'i community. How would their affairs be directed? How would they be guided? Immediately after the funeral, the women and men who had been appointed by Shoghi Effendi as hands of the cause of God gathered together in the Holy Land. These distinguished individuals whose main duties were the protection and propagation of the faith, became responsible for coordinating the affairs of the Baha'i community until the Universal House of Justice could be elected. The power of the covenant to maintain unity was evident in the community's unwavering loyalty to the hands of the cause. Hands of the cause traveled the world tirelessly, encouraging and inspiring the Baha'is to complete the Guardian's global plan. Baba Mungu wa mapensi Zambi na mizangu Mimi na kipofu masikini By the end of the plan, the Baha'i community had achieved more over 10 years than had been possible in the previous century. The number of countries and territories in which Baha'is resided had doubled to 259 in more than 14,000 localities. Fifty-six national spiritual assemblies had been established and thousands of local spiritual assemblies were administering to the well-being of communities across the globe. The foundation and pillars of the administrative order were now in place.
On the 21st of April, 1963, members of 56 national assemblies from around the world gathered together at the House of Abdul Baha in Haifa to elect the Universal House of Justice, the international governing body of the Baha'i Faith. This highly significant event took place exactly 100 years after the declaration of Baha'u'llah in Baghdad. The hands of the cause requested that they themselves be left free from election to this institution so as to perform the services assigned to them by the Guardian. Baha'u'llah had ordained the creation of the Universal House of Justice in his Book of Laws, the Kitab al-Aghdas. Abdul Baha had confirmed its authority in his will and testament, and the Guardian had devoted more than three decades to preparing the Baha'i world for its election. Through the agency of the Universal House of Justice, the Covenant of Baha'u'llah continued to fulfill its life-giving purpose. These next three decades were tumultuous and creative years. These next three decades were years of intense learning and experimentation. नमस्ते आशा मैं ठीक हूँ शुक्रिया बस ग्रीष्मकालीन शिविर के लिए अपनी प्रस्तुति पर काम कर रही हूँ अच्छा चल रहा है कौन सा आमंत्रण ओ समीक्षा बैठक के लिए हाँ मुझे मिला दरअसल मेरा जाने का विचार नहीं था अब मैं प्रार्थना सभा का आयोजन नहीं करती शुरू में सब बहुत अच्छा चल रहा था फिर कुछ समय बाद लोगों ने आना बंद कर दिया इसलिए मैंने बंद करने का फैसला लिया मैं समझती हूँ पर मुझे नहीं लगता मेरे पास बांटने के लिए कुछ भी महत्वपूर्ण है ठीक है मैं इसके बारे में सोचकर आपको बताऊंगी बाय आशा Applying Baha'u'llah's teachings to our life and to the needs of society is something that has to be learned.
with a heart full of joy and gladness, I greet and welcome all the beloved friends who are assembled here for the purpose of celebrating the most great jubilee. In this room, you have people from all the continents of the world. You have people from so many tribal backgrounds, so many religious backgrounds. This is a religion of love. In 1963, the Universal House of Justice began to guide the Baha'i community through a series of plans following the pattern set by Shoghi Effendi. decades, with enthusiasm and dedication, the Baha'is continued to carry Baha'u'llah's vision of the oneness of humanity to all corners of the globe. Artistic expression flourished in the sharing of the teachings. Music, dance and drama touched hearts and attracted souls. Spearheading this movement were the youth. Drawing on the power of prayer and inspired by the young heroines and heroes of the faith, they enthusiastically arose to play a vital part in this spiritual enterprise. In a beautiful land, to see the sky. It's the race for time, the time, the place. To see what one family is, the human race. In some parts of Asia, Africa, and Latin America, hundreds of thousands of people embrace the faith. It was during this period that the first head of state, Malitoa Tanumafili II of Samoa, became a Baha'i. Over a period of 30 years, the number of national assemblies tripled to 174, further building the administrative order that Shoghi Effendi had raised, and strengthening the foundation upon which Baha'u'llah's vision of a world embracing civilization could be realized. As the faith became increasingly established, Baha'is began to apply Baha'u'llah's teachings to the social and economic needs of the societies in which they lived, giving rise to thousands of grassroots initiatives across the world. Hundreds of sustained projects in education, health, literacy and agriculture were born. Numerous Baha'i-inspired development organizations emerged for the welfare and prosperity of all. Such initiatives were first set in motion by Abdul Baha in Iran with the establishment of schools for both girls and boys, the creation of clinics, and the encouragement of programs aimed at social and economic prosperity. To this day, the Baha'is of Iran, despite ongoing relentless persecution, have exhibited extraordinary resilience, love, courage and heroism, and continue to contribute to the advancement of the social, spiritual and material well-being of their homeland and peoples.
By the 1990s, the ethnic and cultural diversity of the Baha'i community worldwide was greatly enriched and its character transformed. The fundamental spiritual truth of our age is the oneness of humanity. The faith had become increasingly recognized in national and international forums and was now the second most geographically widespread religion in the world. As a result of this rapid growth, many challenges arose. Having large numbers of people embracing the Baha'i teachings did not in itself build a vibrant community life. Resources were overwhelmed in trying to sustain the deepening of hundreds of thousands of people in the revelation of Baha'u'llah. And as the diversity of people entering the faith or engaging in its activities expanded, the need for processes that build unity became more and more apparent. Ingrained prejudices, inherited over countless generations, required conscious and concerted efforts to be remedied. Many questions arose. How can women be given an equal voice in an unbalanced world dominated by men? How are the educational needs of large numbers of children to be systematically addressed? How do local assemblies administer to the needs of rapidly growing communities? What would be the nature of the educational effort that would raise capacity to address these urgent challenges? This launched the Baha'i world into a process of intense learning, where many new strategies, methods and approaches were tested. The institution of the counselors played a crucial role in navigating this process. This institution was created by the Universal House of Justice to extend the functions of the hands of the cause of God. Through it, a system now exists by which lessons learned in one place can be quickly analyzed and shared with the entire Baha'i community, enriching global consultations, stimulating sustained action, building capacity and inspiring confidence. Today, the International Teaching Center, together with the Continental Board of Counselors and their auxiliaries, continues to stimulate and advance this flow of learning. In the Tablet of Carmel, Baha'u'llah revealed the charter for the development of the world's spiritual and administrative center of the faith.
In 1996, the Baha'i community had reached a turning point. Following years of experience gained at the grassroots of the community in certain areas of the world, the Universal House of Justice called for the establishment of a network of training institutes, an instrument of limitless potentialities. This set in motion a process to raise capacity within every population to take charge of its own spiritual, social and material progress. The Baha'i community had now entered a new stage in its learning and development. Namaste Asha. Shayad ab samay aagya ki mein sikhon ki kaise sikhte hain. Mein samiksha baitak mein aungi. Mein janna chaati hoon ki dousro ne kya sikha hai. Aur haan, mujhe apne anubha baatne mein bhi khushi hoogi. Kisse pata, shayad mein apni praatna sabahe fir se shuru kar sukhu. Kal milte hain. Bye. A los niños les va a encantar. Hola. 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 Hasta mañana. Sí. Si alguien me hubiera dicho hace seis meses que estaría sentada aquí haciendo flores de papel para una clase de niños en mi barrio, no les habría creído. Honestamente, antes de conocer a los Baháes, no tenía experiencia enseñando a los niños y nunca pensé que podría ofrecer algún servicio en mi barrio. Es maravilloso que estés ayudando con la clase. Y es genial que podamos preparar nuestras clases juntos. Sí, absolutamente. Desde que empezamos estas reuniones regulares, me han surgido muchas ideas nuevas para mi propia clase. Por cierto, ¿Cómo planeas hacer la memorización esta vez? ¿Quizás con gestos? ¿En serio? ¿Tienen que memorizar una cita otra vez? Bueno, lo que quiero decir es que para algunos de ellos no es fácil. Incluso a mí me cuesta memorizar citas en mi círculo de estudio. Dejémoslo. Podríamos explicar la cita y luego pasar a la historia. Les encanta esa parte. A los niños les encantan las historias, es verdad. He pensado mucho sobre por qué memorizamos los escritos sagrados. Podríamos simplemente leer la cita, pero en realidad no permanece en nuestras mentes. Nuestros pensamientos influyen sobre nuestras acciones. Así que cuando memorizamos estas palabras, se convierten en un hábito en nuestra mente. Y es más probable que se expresen en acción. Es cierto. Cuando comienzo a perder la paciencia, recuerdo que una lengua amable es el imán del corazón de los hombres. Sí, hay un poder en la palabra de Dios. Tiene una influencia creativa en el mundo del ser. Abre nuestro corazón y puede transformarnos. Mira esto. At the heart of all the courses of the Training Institute, is the creative word. As people participate in these courses, they deepen their understanding of the Baha'i teachings and develop the capacity to meet the spiritual and material needs of their villages and neighborhoods. The concept of the Training Institute is not something new. Abdu'l-Baha himself had referred to the training of teachers of the faith 
in the tablets of the divine plan. He also encouraged regular study classes to prepare teachers of the faith in Iran. Over the past 25 years, more and more people have been participating in the institute process, giving rise to vibrant and purposeful new communities. All are welcome. There is a new understanding of the relationships between the individual, the institutions, and the community, and how their roles are complementary in building a better world. Individuals see themselves as protagonists of change, responsible for their own spiritual growth, while at the same time contributing to the development of society. Institutions seek to nurture, encourage, and guide, creating an environment of trust and support. At the heart of these vibrant communities are service and worship. These two essential and inseparable aspects of life are wed together in the institution of the Mashogal Askar, the dawning place of the praise of God, a reality described by Abdul Baha as one of the most vital institutions in the world. The house of worship, a place for prayer and meditation, is to be surrounded by humanitarian institutions, such as schools, hospitals, and orphanages, that serve the population around it. The first house of worship was built in 1908 in Ishkhabad, Turkmenistan, in 2016, the world witnessed the completion of the last continental house of worship in Santiago, Chile. Since then, local and national temples have begun to be built in different parts of the world, serving as beacons of light, illuminating the planet. where the training institute is firmly rooted, social action efforts are emerging. These efforts, aimed at material progress, are based on applying spiritual principles to improve social conditions. They are the result of a growing collective consciousness of the social, spiritual, and material needs of society as well as a desire to contribute to an ever-advancing civilization. In 2018, due to the vast amount of learning generated, and in order for this area of endeavor to flourish, the Universal House of Justice created the new institution of the Baha'i International Development Organization at the Baha'i World Center. Capacities built in the arena of social action are also enriching the participation of Baha'is in prevalent discourses of society. From the local to the national to the international level, Baha'is are engaging community leaders, organizations, and government agencies in a range of topics of significance to the life of society, including the equality of women and men, the movement of peoples and integration, poverty alleviation, the elimination of racial prejudice, and environmental and sustainable development. Through the establishment of five offices of the Baha'i International Community, the experiences of the global Baha'i community are being shared with multiple international organizations. Chief amongst these is the United Nations, where the Baha'i International Community has consultative status with UNESCO and UNICEF, contributing to policy discourses at the global level. Nearly 100 years ago, Shoghi Effendi spoke of the society-building power inherent in the faith, a power that can regenerate the individual and rebuild a broken world. Today, the stirrings of this power can be seen in the social transformation taking place across the world, where people are striving to translate Baha'u'llah's teachings into action. Prevailing habits, 
customs, and modes of expression begin to change, and even aspects of culture begin to advance. This is an outward manifestation of an even more profound inner transformation affecting many souls. Esto es increíble. Ahora entiendo cómo nuestra clase de niños encaja en el contexto más amplio. Exactamente. Y por muy pequeña que sea nuestra clase, está contribuyendo a un bien común. Cuéntame más sobre este cambio de cultura. Una de las evidencias que veo es en la manera en que se están redefiniendo las relaciones. Nuestra relación con el Creador, entre nosotros e incluso con la Tierra. Por ejemplo, en localidades donde el proceso de instituto está floreciendo, la relación entre mujeres y hombres está cambiando. Juntos están trabajando para desafiar prejuicios profundamente arraigados y costumbres injustas. Donde antes veíamos una cultura de opresión, hoy vemos surgir una cultura de igualdad. Y las mujeres están a la vanguardia de la transformación de la sociedad. Quisiera mostrarte algo. It is a story almost as old as time itself. Even before she was born, they tried to make her disappear like a magic trick. But her presence was noted, if only in her absence. When she was born, instead of sharing sweets, they shared ribbon-tied bags of sorrow. And when she received, she received the smallest, the least, and the last, or often none at all. Food, comfort, education, respect. If she went to school, she had to be careful to not learn too much, to not speak too much, to not be seen too much. She must not take up too much space. She must make herself smaller and smaller, fold herself into shapes that are quiet, restrained, contained. Learn that her own body is not a safe house for her soul. But now, with this new revelation, a new story is being written. A story that unravels all the stories of the past. A story where women stand side by side with men. Even before she is born, there is celebration for the anticipation of a brand new soul. When she is born, the family, the village, the city, the nation rejoice. She will receive food, comfort, education, respect. She will go to school. She has so much to learn, to understand, to speak of, to teach. She will grow and she will grow. She will breathe and she will dream. And she will do and she will know that her voice is powerful. She will arise. She will unfold from shapes that are quiet, restrained, contained, until her family, her village, her city, her nation too will blossom. Today, after a full century of collective efforts, we are beginning to see the treasures of wisdom hidden in Abdu'l-Baha's will and testament and the tablets of the divine plan. Millions of women and men are turning their hearts to the example of Abdu'l-Baha and are striving to follow in his footsteps. Little by little, day by day, they seek to align their inner and outer lives with the teachings of Baha'u'llah and are consciously working towards building a prosperous and peaceful global civilization. It's incredible what's been achieved in 100 years. I wonder what the next 100 years will look like. Well, that depends on us. We all have a part to play. Our actions will influence the future. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't give up on my junior youth group. <laughs> and you with your children's class. <laughs> and me with this study circle.
You have written the story of the unfoldment of the divine plan on the scroll of its first century. Before you, beloved friends, lies stretched out the blank scroll of the future, on which you and your spiritual descendants will inscribe fresh and lasting deeds of renunciation and heroism for the betterment of the world.